Trail Studio, links are such an essential tool that it's worth getting really familiar with them. Maybe you're wanting to get away from the mouse and keyboard and start getting the most out of your MIDI hardware. Or maybe you want to experiment with automation and getting the most out of your plugins. However you like to work, Lynx can unlock whole new worlds of musical ideas and production techniques. The focus of this video is on mastering the four types of Lynx on offer. Local, Omni, Global and Volatile. We'll start with local links, which are just the ordinary garden variety links which you've been making all the time. They're usually referred to as simply links, but I'll call them local links to contrast with the other types of links we're going to look at. There are countless ways to create them, such as right-clicking on just about any knob or slider from image line. With VST plugins, such as Native Instruments, I usually tweak the control I want to link to. And assuming I can see feedback in the hint panel, I'll right click on the multi link button and link to the last tweaked parameter. And sometimes I'll click on the current project tab of the browser and right click on any of the hundreds of parameters listed there. Local links are highly specific. They only work in the project you save them in and they only apply to a single instance of the plugin. In this example, I'll load Massive X, drop in an arpeggio pattern, and then link a knob on my MIDI controller to the cutoff parameter in Massive X. Now, even if I close the instrument window, switch to a different instrument in the channel rack and start playing that, the link to the cutoff parameter remains active. It's also worth noting that local links are the only type of link which can be used with internal controllers, such as automation curves, XY controllers, the Fruity Peak controller, and so on. The other three types of links we'll look at are only for hardware controllers. Local links will probably serve most of your needs, but some links are so damn useful that you'll want to use them again and again in different projects. Repeatedly creating the same links can be a pain, so the remaining type of links are designed to be less specific and work across a variety of situations. Now let's look at Omni links. You've probably come across the term Omni in relation to MIDI channels. For example, when I set a contact instrument to Omni, it will respond to MIDI messages on any of the 16 MIDI channels. Omni links, on the other hand, have nothing to do with MIDI channels. The term Omni refers to the fact that the link will work on any channel in the channel rack, provided it's active. Apart from that, they're pretty similar to local links. In fact, technically, they're a subcategory of local links. They get stored in the current project, and they're created in the same way. You just have to toggle on the Omni option in the link dialog. Because they work on any channel, they're ideal for MIDI messages which can be understood by a variety of different plugins. For example, there are a bucket load of instruments which will respond to pitch bend, modulation wheel, and aftertouch messages. Those are fantastic candidates for Omnilinks, but you don't even have to create those because the boffins at ImageLine beat you to it. They've already been added to every project template which comes with FL Studio. Having useful Omnilinks in your template projects is the cat's pyjamas, and you might want to consider adding some of your own, depending on which plugins you use. If you own a sustain pedal, then having an Omnilink for that is a no-brainer, and you can check out my other video about foot pedals linked below. It includes a demonstration of creating an Omnilink and storing it in a template project. Expression control messages are another good candidate for Omnilinks, especially if you use Contact, Spitfire Audio plugins, and many others. So we've seen how Omnilinks are especially well suited to living in template projects, but you can also use them in ordinary project files. For example, when you have multiple instances of the same plugin, and you want a knob or slider to control whichever one is active. Now we'll take a look at global links, sometimes called generic links. 
There's a separate command for creating these on the linking menu, but apart from that, you create them in the same way as local links. There are two main things you need to know about global links. The first is that they don't get saved into your project. As soon as you create or delete one, it gets saved to your FL Studio preferences. More specifically, to a mapping file in your documents folder. Which means that it will work in all your projects. Old projects, future projects, and even future versions of FL Studio, right up until the Earth is eventually consumed by the Sun. For example, if I start an empty project and load some plugins, like MassiveX and Absinthe, I can start controlling them right away thanks to the global links I created back when I was in kindergarten. But you don't have to worry that they're too permanent. Just like ordinary links, they can be deleted by returning to the linking dialog and pressing the reset button. You can also delete the mapping file from your documents folder if you want to start over. Or you can edit the file in a text editor if you're feeling sufficiently reckless. The second thing to know about global links is that they follow window focus. For example, I've already created global links from these sliders on my MIDI controller to the volume levels in my mixer. But if I click on something in another window, or even the browser, the mixer loses focus. You'll notice that the mixer's title bar goes dim, and the global links no longer respond. Now, this behaviour is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it means that I can use these hardware sliders for other purposes when I'm not working in the mixer. And it's a curse because when you first start using global links, I can almost guarantee that this will trip you up. For example, I might be sitting in front of contact, and it's the current channel, the window's open, I can play the instrument, the mod wheel and pitch wheel respond, but my global link to the volume control doesn't seem to be working. Eventually, I'll realise that the window doesn't have focus, so I'll click on the title bar, and now I'm back in business. That kind of confusion is a rite of passage for most FL Studio users. Or maybe it's just me, but either way, you do get used to it, so don't be put off. I'd recommend experimenting with global links to find out which ones help your workflow. I find they're especially useful for instruments which have consistent macro controls, such as Complete Control, Massive, Absinthe, and many others. As we've seen, global links enable you to automatically use the same hardware controls for different purposes, depending on which window has focus. So now that I've set up these knobs on my Oxygen with global links to various plugins, does it prevent me from using the knobs for other purposes, such as creating local links? Fortunately, no. I can still create local links to any of those knobs in whichever projects I want. If you don't have many knobs or sliders on your MIDI controller, that can be good to know. Just remember that local links will always override global links. When a MIDI message reaches FL Studio from your hardware, it will be used for local links and omni links if there are any, and the debugger log will report handled first chance. It's only when there are no local or omni links that the message gets checked for global links, then volatile links. This is kind of important, so let's see it in action. In a new project, I'll load complete control, and because of global links I created some time ago, I already have control over the eight macro knobs at the top. Now I'll add some delay to that with replica, and maybe I want to link the dry wet mix to my MIDI controller. In practice, I'd probably link it to one of the sliders which isn't already in use, but let's suppose that I've run out of hardware controllers, so I'll link to one of the knobs. I'll tweak the dry wet setting in Replica, open the link dialog, twist one of the hardware knobs, and that creates a new local link in this project. Now, even if I close Replica and return focus to the complete control window, that knob doesn't control the macro parameter anymore because the local link takes precedence. Before we leave global links behind and move on to the final type of link, there's one last thing I should mention for advanced users. When I created global links for Massive, for example, I linked to the host parameters in the browser, and this will work well in all my future projects because that list of host parameters is always the same. 
at least it is for Massive. If I change to a different preset in Massive, the labels may change, but the first eight host parameters will always control the eight macro knobs in Massive. When you link to a host parameter, you're not linking to the parameter by name, but rather to the nth parameter on the list. So far, so good. But there are some plugins which populate that list of host parameters completely differently depending on which instruments or patches you load in the plugin. One example is Native Instruments Reactor. There are hundreds of different instruments and effects which you can load in Reactor, and there's no consistency in how the parameter list gets populated. It can be very different every time. Now, for local links this isn't a problem because then you're dealing with a single instance of a plugin and the parameters won't usually change. But when you're setting up global links, you want them to work in all your future projects, no matter what you've loaded in the plugin. There's no point in creating global links to, say, the first eight host parameters in Reactor because they'll control different parameters every time, and usually not very useful ones. In time, you'll get familiar with which plugins have consistent host parameters and which have variable parameters. Plugins such as Reactor, Contact, Guitar Rig and Patcher have wildly varying parameters depending on how you use them. So the host parameters on those plugins are not good candidates for global links. Fortunately, you can usually work around this issue. For example, starting with an empty project, I'll load Form, which runs inside of Reactor. The hardware knobs on my controller are magically linked to Form's macro controls, so I can start tweaking the sound right away. These links only work in Form, and other Reactor instruments have their own links. In a nutshell, I achieved this by linking to MIDI parameters instead of host parameters. In future videos, we'll look more closely at the various pros and cons of MIDI and host parameters. The final type of link we'll look at is a volatile link. As an FL Studio user, you're probably already familiar with the idea of the last tweaked parameter. Despite its somewhat intimidating name, the volatile link is just a permanent link between a hardware control and the last tweaked parameter. First, you'll need to dedicate a knob or slider on your MIDI controller to be a volatile link for all your projects. You might even want to label it, or at least make a mental note, because you can't really use it for anything else. Next, tell FL Studio that it's the volatile link. From now on, that will always be linked to the last knob you adjusted. Depending on your situation, this can help speed up your workflow. If you want to tweak a parameter while playing your keyboard, it's quite handy. And if you want to quickly record some automation, you can do so instantly. There's no harm in trying it out, and if you decide that you don't like it, you can get rid of it by opening the Volatile Link dialog and clicking on the Reset button. Now, there are some caveats you should know about. In my opinion, it's a good idea to choose a hardware knob or slider which you wouldn't otherwise use. Ideally, dedicate it to the task, and don't create other links to the same knob. As we've already seen, it's possible to create other links using the same knob, and they'll override the Volatile Link when they're active. And it looks terribly simple when you're watching an animated flowchart on YouTube. But in practice, things can quickly devolve into a confusing clusterfuck. Oops, can I say fuck on YouTube? Oh shit, I'm making it worse. Never mind, I'll cut that bit out. Anyway, if you override the volatile link, the knob may change its behavior, depending on which instrument is active, or even which window has focus. So, a dedicated knob on your MIDI controller is simplest, and if you only have a few hardware controls, then sacrificing one of them to this task may not be worth it. You'll also discover that, true to their name, volatile links don't last long. As soon as you touch anything else, such as a volume control, the volatile link will switch to that. And finally, this type of link doesn't play especially well with other hardware links. As soon as you touch some other hardware control which FL Studio recognizes, such as another controller you've linked, or the mod wheel, the pitch wheel, or possibly even the foot pedal, then FL Studio will make that the last tweet parameter, which is probably not what you want. It's a pity that FL Studio can't distinguish between something you tweet with your mouse and something you tweet with your hardware controller, but it can't, so just be aware. But despite these issues, I still consider the volatile link to be pretty handy and worth trying out. Okay, so we've now got a good handle on the four different types of links and how to use them. 
Have we covered everything there is to know about links? Not by a country mile. There's heaps more to explore, so have fun experimenting. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you've picked up some ideas for creating your own links in FL Studio.